Hi, it's Aachen from Inner Space Explorers. So that's a super spontaneous video. I was just on the lake, um, basically for a Saturday morning relaxed oxygen rebreather dive. And uh, every time I'm doing this, it's uh, obviously people are looking at this weirdo in the camouflage wetsuit and the oxygen rebreather. A lot of them never saw something like that before. And um, so there was a, a diving school <coughs> doing a rescue class. And obviously I was the attraction. And when I got out, um, they asked me a little bit about it. Yeah, well, this is, how does it work, etc., etc., etc. And um, one of these guys actually was like, isn't that way more dangerous? And we had a little bit of a, of a discussion. Um, and I thought it's a good, good video topic to, um, to look a little bit at it. I mean, what's more dangerous, rebreathers or open circuit? Before we get into this discussion, if you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. All right, what's more dangerous? I mean, when you look at open circuit diving, diving, in the end, what what kills you is that you're either breathing the wrong gas or you're breathing no gas at all. So breathing the wrong gas means obviously that you did something initially wrong. <clears throat> I mean, that can be technical diving. You switched to the wrong gas for whatever reason, bad labeling or um, not following the proper procedures, um, not analyzing your gas, something like that. Or in recreation and diving, you're diving a nitrox tank while you think you're diving an air tank, um, whatever. Or you're on purpose diving the wrong gas, like deep air diving or something like that. But in every single case, um, that doesn't differ from from uh, rebreather diving. I mean, if you do not label the gas properly, if you don't do analyzing uh, and do analyze your gas, or if you intentionally use the wrong gas for what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you're diving a rebreather or um, or open circuit. It's always the same problem. So having no gas um, in open circuit diving means either you're solo diving and you don't have sufficient backup. Or your gas planning sucks, or you don't have a partner that works properly, or something like that. So generally speaking, in open circuit diving, being out of gas, and I think we discussed that in one of the previous videos where we uh, talked about the causes for uh, for accidents. I really don't see how that should happen. Um, and if it happens, either you have a very very bad day and Murphy's all over you. Because that means you run out of gas for whatever reason, and there is no partner, and there is no backup, or you are simply stupid. So when you look at rebreather diving, of course a rebreather offers more possibilities for something to go wrong. Uh, you have the, the um, CO2 absorbing, which obviously can cause an issue. You have bad lime, uh, it's not packed properly, it got wet, whatever. So you can run into the CO2 hit. Um, then obviously you can flood the loop, you can get this caustic cocktail. Uh, for the non-rebreather diving, this is when that absorbent, that chemical substance that absorbs the TO2, uh, CO2 out of your breathing gas gets wet, it becomes caustic. Uh, and you don't want to breathe that or get it in your, uh, in your mouth or even worse in your lungs or whatever. Um, burns like hell and can get you into serious trouble actually. So, yeah, that is an additional issue, but again, yeah, something that you can plan for, and if you're aware of it, there is a way out of that. So, very unlikely that that rebreather suddenly, from working 100% perfectly fine to um, pumping caustic uh, water, substance, whatever, into your mouth. That's not going to happen. So, there's something else has to go wrong. And um, the CO2 poisoning obviously is something that you can also prepare for. It's not something that hits you like this. So you will feel it coming. And um, everybody out there who had one, please put something in the comment section and explain how that was. But I mean, it's not something that hits you suddenly you feel it coming and you can react to it simply by bailing out so you go on open circuit and you end your dive and you have enough open circuit gas to uh, end your dive and go back to the surface and do decompression if you have to do decompression etc so yeah that's something on top of it but i wouldn't consider it a danger it's something that you have to be aware for and you have to plan for 
So the two things that can actually create additional hazards in rebreather diving is hypoxia and hypoxia, which means too much oxygen or not enough oxygen. So depending on the type of, of rebreather you're diving, you have your um, measuring device that shows you how much PO2 you have in your gas. And um, that is pretty solid today. So uh, that the machine is giving you a wrong number or like a right number, but in fact, you're breathing the wrong gas. So there is not enough oxygen, but the rebreather tells you there is. That's very, very unlikely. Um, the oxygen rebreather that I've been diving today, for example, it doesn't have that, but it's only pure oxygen. So it, it would be too much for that video to explain exactly why, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there you have to think a little bit more. And also you can run into a situation where you have not enough oxygen on a pure oxygen rebreather. Again, you have to, to do a couple of things very, very wrong uh, to get into that situation and having too much oxygen which is the more likely issue with an oxygen rebreather means you're going too deep than what your limit is. So again, it's not the rebreather that's killing you, it's your own stupidity. Um, on a mixed gas rebreather, same thing. If you breathe the wrong gas, meaning for example, you have no oxygen and you run into hypoxia, means something on your system is wrong. You didn't open the oxygen, um, you ignore the warning of the rebreather, you're pumping in the wrong gas, a ton of things the problem is that kills you instantly but it's the same thing as open circuit if you breathe uh, 1080 on the surface or you breathe 50 percent nitrox in 50 meters of water it's always the same thing so if that gas is provided by a regulator from a scuba tank or if that was provided by the rebreather it doesn't really make such a great difference so we could run into this old discussion and i'll put a couple of links in the description of that video where i discuss this um, rebreather topic mccr so manual driven rebreather versus electronic rebreather in my opinion on that yeah if you rely on the electronic rebreather and you do not monitor it properly and question what it is doing yeah that can actually run you into an issue but again, that's a matter of training and what you believe and which protocol you're following. And if you've decided I want to follow that protocol, you have to. And not just, yeah, um, make the easiest way and uh, hope for the best. So the other thing, the, 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 the classical things is running out of gas. Um, on open circuit, we just discussed it. Running out of gas on a rebreather is basically not possible. So talking about a classical mixed gas rebreather, which has oxygen and diluent, you have these two small bottles. And of course, one of these bottles can, for whatever reason, have no more gas. So let's say the oxygen bottle is empty suddenly. Then you can have a couple, then you have a couple, then you have a couple of possibilities. So Depending on the rebreather and the gas that you're breathing, you, you can run it in semi-closed mode, which means you rebreathe a couple of times, then you exhale the gas in the water, you get fresh diluent in that case back, you rebreathe that a couple of times, you exhale it in the water. So suddenly it's not a fully closed rebreather anymore, and you can compensate for that lack of pure oxygen that normally is added to your loop. Um, obviously that reduces the amount of time that you have, but at that moment you would bail out anyway, which means you're on a straight way either out or up. So also there is an, a potential issue. There is also a different solution. The other thing is that you always carry enough bailout gas, open circuit bailout gas. So in case something happens with your rebreather, you can do an open circuit ascent or way back if you talk cave diving or whatever overhead environment um, so if if the rebreather for some reason doesn't have enough gas you could still do go back open circuit but if the rebreather just doesn't have enough gas anymore you could still plug in different gas from your open circuit bailout and still rebreathe it so the other thing is being out of rebreather, as I call it. So the rebreather has a malfunction. So as I said before, 
your uh, lime doesn't work properly because it's it's not packed properly it got wet whatever um you got some other flooding in the rebreather um your electronics are for some reason not working anymore if you dive an eccr so the rebreather is not working anymore then again you have your bailout and you carry your own bailout so actually and that was the, re the, the reason these guys were actually talking to me they were like oh you were solo in the water with a rebreather isn't that super dangerous actually less than open circuit because open circuit if i do not have a certain amount of bailout and i'm running into an issue i have to bail out to the surface because i don't have a partner if i'm diving a rebreather i don't need that partner to offer me open circuit bailout long hose concept or something like that because i always have to carry open circuit bailout so even if i run out of gas or out of rebreather in that case i have my own bailout so obviously it's nice to have that partner next to me that can provide me with whatever i need uh, and if it's just holding my hand but i do not need this person to donate gas to me normally because i'm carrying my own bailout and he's doing the same if he's a rebreather diver which makes sense if i have to dive a rebreather for a certain dive then obviously my partner should be on a rebreather as well so i'm not a big fan of these mixed team things so um as a conclusion you can say yeah the rebreather pro probably holds a couple of more um surprises for you that so a couple of more things that can go wrong but at the same time it offers you a lot more possibilities to solve these issues so is it more dangerous than open circuit no definitely not actually i think it's safer if you follow all the procedures if you have proper training and if you plan your dive properly and follow that plan and if you carry the bailout to, to to basically carry out that plan all right i'm super curious to hear your thoughts on that um if there's um uh, as i said before some of you that had issues uh and were um able to successfully handle these if you got type of um hypercapnia or whatever so co2 poisoning please put it in the comment section i'm um, curious to read about it and uh, other than that stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye